Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, throughout our country's history, bold reforms have been born in moments of crisis. The Great Depression forced Congress to create the Securities and Exchange Commission, tasked with overseeing and regulating the market to protect investors. And almost 80 years later, Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Act in response to the 2008 financial crisis, strengthening consumer protections against financial market abuse and creating transparency and accountability requirements for the entire financial system. Yet today, crisis after crisis created by large technology platforms have resulted in minimal federal response. In fact, crickets. Under the leadership of Republican and Democratic controlled governments alike, a handful of US companies have become monopolies. They've optimized their platforms solely for ad revenue, and in turn, they've become breeding grounds for the spread of weaponized disinformation, hate speech, and content that harms our children. These issues have been closely examined. We've held hearings with experts. We've yelled at executives. And we've sent letters all saying the same thing. Do better. Yet the end result has remained the same. Nothing changes, and company stock prices hit new highs. The focus of today's hearing may be on the legislative proposals introduced by myself and my colleagues, but the question is much simpler. How long can we continue this inaction? How long can we look at our children and say the change is necessary, but we just haven't been able to enact it yet? Congress has gotten off the sidelines in the past. For practically every other industry, cars, airplanes, and banks, we employ key organizations that keep pace with new developments and inform regulations aimed to protect consumers. We must get off the sidelines once again. Enough listening to companies saying, trust us, we have a process for that. Enough internal bickering that ends any real chance of progress, and enough watching Europe go first, and the Senate. I commend my colleagues on the committee, including our panel's leadership, who recognize that we have everything we need to act, the smoking guns, the historical precedent, and the legislative text. All we need today is the willpower. So Ms. Lehman. The Digital Services Oversight and Safety Act creates a bureau at the FTC staffed with experts employed to issue rules related to public-facing transparency reports, certified researchers with data access, and disclosures to the commission so that we can shine sunlight on how consumer data is collected and used. Could you please explain why transparency requirements like these are so important? Absolutely, thank you. Transparency requirements, particularly like those in your bill, we, ha we have a variety of them, right? So we have users and advertisers and individuals who need to understand what values the platforms that they use operate on. Um, they, uh, so that parents can decide, is this platform, are these platforms values coherent with what I want my kids to be on? Um, and and uh, the, some of the most exciting components of the bill really are that we, we, we've seen time and time again that there is an allergy um, from the platforms to transparency and to accountability, whether that's Facebook disabling crowd tangle or disbanding the crowd tangle team, um, whether the, that's um, uh, other other, uh, we, we've seen the list. Um, that and so having access to understand, okay, what kinds of misinformation? How does it spread? How can we fix these problems? Um, we don't have the context for that right now, and and the parts of the bill that 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 shine that sunlight um, make that possible. Well, thank you. And, and in your experience, how quickly do social media companies change their products and processes? And why is it so important to have a bureau that is flexible and nimble enough to quickly publish safety guidelines or issue new rules uh, for disclosures? Yeah, I, th I think particularly for um, in this space, things can change instantaneously. I think we think we've heard a little bit today about the metaverse and about and, and about like what Web three and AR and VR might look like. We think back to five or six years ago, which is a, kind of a long time, and sometimes in, in legislative land, right? Uh, you, what would, how would, a, how could um, thinking through uh, live video and the advent of live video uh, was fairly revolutionary, and the fact that live video was happening on phones, and how did that change, and, and what kinds of, as we heard from Mr. Duffer, Duffy earlier, what kinds of harms can come from live video? Those are the kinds of things we need to be able to pivot instantaneously on. Um, and, and week that we can't wait for. I couldn't agree more. Uh, certainly there is so much in the black box um, that we need to uh, 
need to shine a light on so that we can keep up, not just the Congress, the FTC. I mean, if not them, who is going to be armed with transparency uh, in this regard? Uh, so I, the last thing, I know I've, I'm out of time, but I would like to request unanimous consent to enter a report from the NYU Stern Center for Business and Human Rights entitled Enhancing the FTC's Consumer Protection Authority to Regulate Social Media Companies.